Hey, what's up guys? This is Ben with Ameriant Equipment and ForestryDoors.com. Wanted to bring you guys another video today. Today we're going to switch out uh, the door on an SVL 65. Um, I did want to note that this is the same frame as the SVL 75 and the 95, the 97s all have the same frame. So this door will work and this uh, uh, install will work on all the SVL machines, not your SSV machines, only the SS or only the SVLs. Here we're at AA Glass out of Marion, Indiana. So if you're in this area, check them out, especially if you're going to get any installs done on vehicles or, or uh, skid skiers, uh, give them a look. So we're going to get into this install here and we'll go from there. Alright guys, so this is the SVL door and it does have a uh, sheet that's applied to the, the, the outside and the inside of the door um, that will be removed after the installation um, is completed so the door's not damaged. So this is the inside of the door and then uh, Dave's going to flip this over here and we're take a look and then this is the outside of the door. So just make sure you guys get that correct when you're doing your install that uh, you have a, the right door going on the inside and, and the outside. So on this door, <clears throat> as you can tell, the edges are milled. The door is half an inch thick. They do come in thinner materials as well, but this door is a half an inch thick, so it's milled around the outer edge, etched on the um, surface here so that you can apply the urethane and make sure it gets a good seal to your frame and then anywhere where there's hardware such as your handles there or the windshield wiper mount <clears throat> or the lower handle here um, those are all milled down to a quarter inch as well so you can use all your existing hardware um, and you don't have to buy any new hardware from anybody else um, so yeah so we'll go ahead and get started with the install also wanted to show you real quick so this SVL door was broken out um, some of you might be installing it when the door hasn't been broken out. This one's been busted out. Um, all the cables and everything are in good condition. Um, and then as you can see, the glass is shattered around the outside of the, uh, of the frame here. So um, we should be good on all our parts and everything like that. And uh, we will get started with the install. Everyone. We peel, this is the inner layer, and we put all of the rubber grommets in the openings before we put it in because sometimes you're trying to move them around and push them through, they get a little stiff. Um, it just makes your life a little easier to do a little prep ahead of time. And we also just wanted to note that this is a two-man install. Um, now it, we are going to be installing the door while it's uh, inside the cab, while the frame's inside the cab. So, um, you can take it out of the cab as well, um, and it might make it possible for a single man to install it, but it's a lot faster to do it this way. This is the way the glass company recommends, and uh, just because the install time is, is a lot quicker. So he's just installing the grommets here before we get going on this. And this is, uh, this is the outside. This is the inside. The inside of the frame. So the biggest thing to watch, the, the grommets are, these two are not for that handle, but these are. These are a little thicker and you have to pay attention to which side goes to the inside and the outside. This is the thicker one. These are for the wiper. The thicker goes to the wiper mount on the inside. You gotta stick. Again, thicker to the wiper mount. Thicker goes on the inside, you said? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes if they don't want to slide in, spray them with a little glass cleaner, like a lubricant, and they'll just slide right in. Again, thicker. Those two go down. 
down there. And they go the same. It doesn't. They're the same way. This is on the upper handle. And you said they're the same. Side, they're the same. Yeah, the side, these are the same matter. on the handle. Yep. Um, so the wiper motor, the thicker, the reason for it is for the vibration of the motor. It gives it a little stability. Pull the lower molding just to get it out of your way. It's not. So. And it has little clips. Yes, this has little fuzzy buttons. It helps to have a nice little fork. Since this is actually like a trim nailer puller, uh, it comes in very handy. Which we did get new clips and new a new seal. That's the clip that's being removed. That can be. Oh, absolutely. Nothing. What you got? <laughs> no, that trim just comes right off, just peels right off. Okay. Yes. Looks like okay. there's some on the back side. Oh, yeah, there's some on the back side. There's two clips at the very end holding these on. We make our own knives, but this is just a box knife. We just make it flatter so that it gives us more room on other projects. And you're saying when we clean, when you're cleaning off this glass um, and the urethane to not take all the urethane off of the frame? Correct. So we leave a skim layer of urethane because urethane sticks to urethane. So you don't have to reprimer. You don't have to. And obviously you're going to make a mess doing this. Um, so as you can see, there's no heat gun or anything needed like that because he's leaving the urethane when you're, on there. When you're cutting, just keep a little pressure on it, kind of pull up, it makes your life easier. Pick a beginning. So this is the old, this is the old year thing that's on Correct. the door still. And so, I mean, we, if you don't get it even, just go back over it and trim it off again. Um, I mean, if you have any excess, like here, there's a little bit of excess. Just take the knife and trim it off. Uh, make sure when you've got the glass off, make sure you get everything cleaned out. I mean, because there is glass throughout the whole frame. And like you're saying, if they did want to clean it down to the frame, they would have to use a urethane that has a primer. Well, so there are two types of urethane. There's primerless and primered. We prefer a primered urethane because it guarantees what it bites to. But a primerless urethane, no, you don't have to primer. You just have to go to clean metal. Um, whereas if we needed primer, then we just touch up where we need it and then let it dry and go back to. Uh, which we'll show you when we primer the plastic door. Okay. Okay, so okay. as you can see now, your first time cutting, your only time, whatever, you're not going to get the urethane that clean and that's flat. That's okay. Literally, all you got to do is once the glass is off, take your knife, and go back against it and clean off your high spots. Make it as flat and as seamless as possible. Okay. So we're ready to clean the frame up. So we've done our cleanup. It's not perfect yet, but it's close. The frame is pretty well ready to go. All our urethane is still there. Um, you only urethane on the four parts. There is not corners, there's nothing in the corners. This is not an air type glass. Um, 
if you get it down to bare metal, go ahead and do your prep, go ahead and treat it as far as, I mean, you don't want exposed metal for corrosion or, you know, um, we use a primer for our glass. We use a two part. Um, we believe that it does a better job, but ultimately both your things, I mean, are designed to do the same thing. And the way that we're doing it like this, with the urethane still on it, is okay. Yes, because and all urethane sticks to other urethanes. All urethane will bond to urethane. Doesn't matter what brand it is. Um, the next, the next step to give yourself room is to pull this gasket trim ring, whatever you want to call it. Which we did get a new one there too. So uh, we put a new that one. That gives you your room because we're going to show you how to put the glass in and then bring the door down to it. Uh, with the gasket, you don't have enough room, you're gonna make a mess. Uh, the next step will be to put urethane on the frame. Again, we use a two part, so we're going to primer uh, the door panel so that it's drying while we're laying the urethane. And, and when using the, the primerless uh, urethane, what is the importance of that as far as? So the uh, biggest thing is to make sure that both are clean. If, okay. if you're using a, a primerless urethane, make sure that your plastic is clean, whether you use a glass cleaner or something that it's clean and dry. The same way with the frame, make sure that it's clean and dry. Okay. Uh, urethane will not stick where it's wet. It's just, that's probably the one fail safe of of your thing. And is that what causes it to release from the front wood Correct. To, to release from the frame? Correct. So if there's any moisture on the frame or on the plastic, I mean, it's not going to stick. It's going to release. Because the majority of the people that are going to be doing installs will probably not be doing a two part with a primer. Correct. They're going to be using a primer list. So I just Correct. wanted to make it a, a note, you know, that it's okay if you leave urethane on the door, just as long as it's uh, even Correct. You know, going all the way around the outer edge because it's still going to stick and still get that good bond Correct. to the to the door. Okay. Correct. All right. So this is the primer? Correct. Okay. This, is, this is what we call an etching primer. It gives us something to put the urethane to bite to. And you're just putting it around the outside of the... Correct. Uh, the very outside now, of the edge there. Not all of this will have urethane on it. We do the edge, the whole edge, so it looks even. It's not necessarily a have to. You only have to have the urethane, the primer where the urethane is going to touch. Okay. And primers, is this something that has to be, that has to have time to set? So, I mean, our flash time, you can watch it drying, it'll start changing colors and get flat. Um, it's about two minutes. And you want, the time you want it to be dry? Yes, okay. you want it to be dry. Okay. Uh, which is why usually we primer right now, let it sit, go back to do the urethane so we know it's dry by the time we're ready for it. All right, so he's got the urethane loaded in his fancy cop gun here. <laughs> and... Uh, he, he likes to cut his tips like this. See if it'll focus here. And what's the reasoning behind that? It just makes it a little taller. That way it gives it something to touch. You'll be able to see a little better once we get the... When you're touching to, yeah. the, to the frame itself. Okay. All right, we're gonna try to get some good video here as much as we can. And again, this is not going in the corners. What about how big of a beater are you putting on here? Oh, it's probably a little more than a quarter of an inch tall. You want it tall enough that way when you put the glass on, it kind of squishes it down. That way it's touching good. You don't have any low spots. 
And is cleanup going to be required after the glass is put on there? Nope. No. Okay. Nope. If, if you do a small, I, I say a small enough, you want a big enough bead that it fits the opening, but not so big that it's going to squeeze out. Um, so for this application, you're about three eighths tall and a quarter wide. All right, so it's okay. on all four now, of frames. Now, we're gonna slowly bring the frame up and there is plenty of clearance. It will not touch anything. As you can see, it's not touching anything up there. Not the bumpers. Even yeah, when it's clicked it, in place, it's not touching anything, as you can see. Right. All right. At least when we get it started, it's like yep. get a hold of it. So again, this is the inside. No, this, this is the outside. Is the outside. This is the outside of the door. So. And he's got a fancy tool. Some people might not have this. So but can, this is just you can a, buy a cheap glass cup at Harbor Freight. Okay. And it will make your life a lot easier. Okay. Once again, make sure the door is flipped to the correct direction when you're putting it on there. We have had people install them backwards, so. <laughs> All right, so you basically put this up against the frame and then you can yep. see it's got a nice, it's, it's squared up real nice where it needs to be around the frame so that he knows exactly where it needs to be. So the main thing here is to hold it up where it needs to go and pull it out towards you nice and tight okay. as he's shutting the door and the urethane will clear and as soon as he gets the door shut, I'm going to push it against the earth. Okay. So Dave was in there closing the frame on the inside of the door. How do you look? So they're making sure that it is squared up on the inside and outside here. That's it. So put it back together. So now, obviously, depending on what type of urethane you're using, uh, once he once he pressed it against there, it's obviously holding pretty well. Correct. It's, yeah. So ours is 30 minutes from the time we open it and start running it. Okay. Before it's hard. Before it's what we call airbag safe or ready to move. Okay. Um, are you using the old no, one? No, we got gonna, a new one. Yep, we got a new one. Okay. And so if they are using one that has like a two hour dry time or something longer. Set. And our recommendation yeah. at that point is once you have that set, uh -huh. flip it up, let the weight of it hold it. Okay. And just. Which would be enough. Walk away. Okay. Um, now, I reached around the frame and just kind of tucked as he was setting it to make sure that we were even. I mean, realistically, I mean, you've got a little bit of variance. Um, but like I said, once you flip it up, let it sit for the time of whatever the urethane recommends. But the urethane or the door is going to stick to that urethane, no matter what type of urethane Correct. it is, it's going to stick enough to where it's not just going to fall, fall away. Correct. Okay. And as tight as it is, there's not a lot of room for variance. I yeah. mean, there's, it's not going anywhere. Okay. Um, the biggest thing you have to watch is the height of your rear bumpers to keep the door from rattling when it's up. You may have to adjust those up a little because that glass is a quarter inch thicker yeah. than the original glass. Okay. Um, next thing we do anyway is put your seal back on your door frame. Um, yeah. There's a line. Now this one's scratched, but there is a line right there where you start.
and we should be right at our mark, which we are. Nice. Doesn't have to stretch it or anything? Nope. nope. And then just go around the outside, make sure you got it all on there tight and that it looks even. And then when your glass comes in, it'll sit right against that, which gives you your seal. All right, so we're gonna install this lower, this is a new lower trim piece. You don't have to have a new piece, but you can just take off the old one like we showed you earlier in the video. But all he's doing is he set the piece of trim on there and then he's putting the clips on the back side in first. Let's speed this up. Guys, just remember here to get the clips pushed all the way into where they're flush with the back side of the door. And don't forget the very two end clips that push in on each side. See the screw right here? That's what the, the back side of this trim is gonna be pushed into. Once you get started, you just kind of pull back and then that little rubber pushes in the groove. Yeah. All right, so That's we're gonna install the upper, the upper handle first. That's the outside. We have had people install these backwards as well and put the handle in, in the outside of the door. So, so, so you want your posts to come from the inside out, so yep. when you're using the handle, you're putting the pressure on this rather than from the opposite way. Yep. So we have this part of the, is on the outside, and then these pull out, these little tabs pull out here, that's how you get your handle off, and there's screws in there. Correct, are, the screws are right, right here. There. So then that goes like that. that. That's the inside, yep. that's the outside, screw through. And screw through, okay. And then our rubber's top handle on first. If you already know how to do this, you can skip this part of the video. But Sorry, rubbers were... yep, the grommets are already in there because we showed you we did that first. So as you can see, that milling, this is what we were talking about earlier. This insets right into that door there so it, it's flush with the door. So you don't have to worry about that. Dave's gonna open it up here so we can see the install here. Screw. What is that, just a Phillips head? That's a number three Phillips. Okay. And usually what I do is just start the first one so that if you need to move it, don't tighten it all the way. And you, with the plastic, you technically can't over tighten these and break it, but you can break the plastic handle. So just tighten them snug. And they have lock washers on them, so they're not gonna back themselves back out. And then the just clip. Just clip snap back in. Nice. All right. All right, so this is the lower handle that we're gonna be installing next. Here's all the parts um, that it, the, it is taken apart right now. The biggest thing to remember is this plate and these, your holes have to line up. So if you have this backwards, your holes don't line up. Yep. Okay. Make sure you get all the little pieces of glass off of it because they will be stuck to it. So coating here so he can have better access to it so he doesn't have to rip it later. And then once again, you can see that it is milled around the uh, <clears throat> door so this handle fits. This is a new handle because the last one got broken, but okay, I'm ready to come it's down. perfect into those okay. slots there. So you can't even really tell. Okay, now we're good. All right. So he's got the handle in. Make sure your screws line up, your holes for your spacer. They go in next. Your spacer does. Your spacers. Yep. And that fits right in that uh, routed. Correct. Milled area, flush with the door, so you can use that inside. So you next you have your two rounds that go in here. That goes against. Once 
one screw on each side. And again, just like the upper handle, just start them so that if you need to do any adjustments or movements, other than I lost the other washer in here. <laughs> And again, I just, I, I don't over tighten these yet. In case you need to wiggle for these other two screws, I just leave it loose enough that it's still able to move, but not gonna fall out on you. And then, This is the latching mechanism you're putting on now. This is what connects to the cables that releases the latch on the bottom and the top. Once those are tight, go back and redo your handles. for a second. I was going to show here. I'm going to show you here this wire that runs to the top of that handle back there, runs along the frame, and just goes in the clips on the side and on the bottom of the door. There's a clip right there as well. Slide the, and, slide the post all the way in, make sure the wire comes around it. And then there's the groove here, and it there's a latch. It like snaps into place. Okay. I'll show the other side here. Ours were, were damaged, so you had to straighten them out. But slides through there, rotates it, and then it clips that right there. And then these have guides all the way around. All you do is make sure they snap in fully. Yep. And right, then on both sides. Make sure the latch works. Yep. Um, but I'll need the 10. This rubber piece, or this uh, plastic piece just goes over the latching mechanism right here. You just screw it on. All right, we're showing you all the parts to the windshield wiper motor, so that, makes, that way you make sure you have everything. The motor itself. Two nuts. And then these go. This is all for the inside. On your... This is the inside. Okay. That's the outside. This is Make sure. sure that you plug this in first because can it be plugged in after? Yes, but it is a bear to get it lined up. Okay. So it is just as easy to go ahead and plug it in. And you need the cover as well. We didn't show the cover, but. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the well, grommets are already. <laughs> and the grommets, again, are already in the box. They're already in because they're put in first. So. And we could take off the plastic just so people can see both sides. And Although that should have been a big reveal, huh? <laughs> the plastic? <laughs> yeah. So one person is just holding it up, the other one is just putting the... Those are the screws, and those will be... Held in on the other side with the two nuts that were in Dave's hand. Ten millimeter nuts. Ten millimeter. And just don't over tighten because polycarbonate can crack. So just a note. And then you put the washer on first. And then you're not. And again, we're showing you this because ours was broken and already disconnected, so we didn't take it apart. So if 
for those of you that don't have the uh, ability to take it off the glass. Uh, we're showing you how to put it back together. And then this is a 7 8 socket, deep well. Pretty and much can just hand tighten it, right? Yes, just hand tighten it. And then your little boot goes on. And then the wiper. Nice. Plastic just goes on, it just clamps, correct? It just snaps yep. into place, just like that. Usually what I do is put this side and get it over and then just snap the other side in. The wires just go in the guide and stay right down the side. So, so because you're a quarter of an inch taller, uh -huh. you have to raise these up. So you just loosen this. Loosen that bolt on the top and then you can rotate. Turn that. it a few turns and you may, you may have to adjust it more than once. And then just grab it and it bites. Okay. You have to do that on both sides. There's two on both sides. And again, just spin the nut down a little to give you room. And then this is what the polycarbonate's going to sit against sit again so it doesn't rattle okay so i'm still this one latched and did beautiful but i need a little more height on that so he's just gonna adjust that uh, second one there and then we're gonna see if it gets a nice tight fit All right. And if you look, I mean, for your anybody's information, you'll see the tips touching the... squish down. Okay. Because I mean, they are kind of a bevel, and when they squish, they'll kind of look like a flattened turkey kiss. That's how you want it tight, so that the door doesn't rattle. Which is a good note to make with all SVL owners. Uh, you know, this is it is a common uh, thing when these you get these machines and you're using them after a while. Those probably get loosened over time and then this that yep. rubber gets softer so you just this, need to adjust them and this doors, keep your door from rattling yep and those doors rattle so with a nice snug fit all right guys well there you have it the uh, new polycarbonate door is installed it's flush against the frame it gets that seal there's not gonna be any leaks for dust or water getting through there um and it's a pretty quick job. So a lot faster definitely than removing the frame uh, from the unit like some of the other videos uh, seen on YouTube. So, All right, guys, there you have it. Uh, this is uh, Ben again with American Equipment and ForesterDoors.com. Please subscribe to my channel for future videos on equipment and things we're going to be doing around the business there. And until next time, thanks, guys.